Good morning. Mark finished his presentation about talking about the art of the possible. But my two favorite words really are impossible and chaos. Why? Because they share one thing in common between them, and that is opportunity. Because in life, very few things are impossible. They are either feasible or unfeasible. And if someone tells you it's impossible, it means that no one has done it before. So it is an opportunity for you to be the first to do it on the, on the market. Chaos is similar. Why? Because chaos is, is a change in the rules of the game. Chaos favors small enterprises in comparison to the large ones. Why? Because large enterprises have tried and tested routines that they follow through a learning curve. And they have learned how to do them in an efficient way. And that creates a disadvantage for SMEs because they need to learn the process. Chaos is not random. Chaos means a change in the rules of the game, which means new routines have to be created. And this creates an opportunity for organizations to be on the same boat, at least with their larger counterparts, to compete and be the first to learn and understand new routines to win the game, to be on the race, at the, at the top of their race. So what technology does is precisely influence these two things make things which in the first instance appeared impossible to become possible and secondly enable us to change the rules of the game so this is precisely the role of technology today but there is another issue because technology is not a magic wand on its own mark referred to the fact that we have all the tools available in place to solve most of the sustainability issues that we are facing in the world but Real and truly, technology is only one component of any form of digital transformation, call it in a company or also on an economic point of view. And many, when I, I've looked at various hundreds of digital transformation projects, and if I had to pinpoint a common factor of failure across all of these projects, is precisely the human being. Why? Because the human being at the end of the day will use the technology and will influence how the technology is dissipated across his own whole ecosystem and he will determine whether it will fail or succeed. So it is important that in any type of digital transformation project, the human being features uh, prominently in that process. And unfortunately today, uh, we have around the failure rate in digital transformation projects is around 80%. And if you consider the onset of artificial intelligence, the failure rate increases even to 90% because artificial intelligence related in projects have distinctive features from those related to <coughs> traditional uh, digital projects. Uh, one of the key points of AI projects is that whereas normal traditional projects are finite intent that they tend to depreciate in value over time, AI projects typically uh, appreciate exponentially in value over time because you are acquiring more information, more data, and through the algorithm, the algorithm is learning to make, to help you make better decisions as you go along. So this is precisely, there is a completely new way of how you can actually manage uh, AI related digital transformation projects. I will focus a bit more on the process. Mark focus on more mostly on the application. I will move towards towards the progress. And when you look at it in a very simplistic way, what is the journey that you need to embark on digital transformation? And I attribute it in three simple steps. The centrality of any digital transformation is a process what I call digital mindfulness. And I'm using this <coughs> technology on purpose because it denotes the involvement of the human being. Okay, I'm not talking about the individual mindfulness here, so we, let's not confuse the terms. I'm talking about the collective organizational mindfulness, being meaning knowing what the organization is all about. And this is the step is frequently underestimated by most senior management teams. Most senior management teams think that they know where they are. But unfortunately, since they have a myopic view of the situation since they have a certain position in an organization and they are not able to see multiple perspectives, they might have a misunderstanding of where they are. And that is very dangerous because obviously decisions are based on an understanding of today in order to project to where you want to go in the future. 
and you have if you have an incorrect understanding of where you are today then obviously you will make the wrong decisions for the future so as a starting point it is important to understand where you are and I will talk about this later on in my presentation once you know where you are from a digital perspective and encapsulates various aspects you need to chart a clear direction of where you want to go but there is a paradox here because you need to do two things which are vitally important one is a clear direction but even more importantly you need to be prepared to change it because circumstances around you change so you have to put in place the right type of responses the right type, type of lean processes that make you flexible enough to adapt to the change in your environment that is the simple uh, consideration about it and there are a number of aspects that need to be considered the last part which perhaps is the most difficult one is the implementation aspect and I call it balanced leadership and what do I mean by balanced leadership here meaning that we all know the maxim that in the transformation we need to have the people the process and the technology and but what most organizations fail to understand is that you don't need the best people best technology and the best processes but you need the right people the right processes and the right technology that synchronize in harmony amongst them otherwise you might fail it's like having a football team made up of the best players in the world but they don't communicate properly between them they would still not do a good job and this is precisely the same thing you need to have a balance of resources to build the required competencies to make the transformation successful so let's look at the digital mindfulness and uh, there are three uh, three key elements uh, in, in place first of all there is the digital maturity which i will leave to jan uh, eventually to talk more about it for his digital maturity index um, but digital maturity is really very important because you, you need to learn how to walk before you can actually run and uh, clearly the, okay there are examples of companies who have succeeded in leapfrogging but leapfrogging stages carries a lot of risk and sometimes it carries a lot of casualties in the process even if you are capable of leapfrogging from one place to another you risk creating a revolution as opposed to an evolution and ultimately you can destroy the ethos of that organization so it's better to create gradual change which uh, creates the best solutions and minimizes risk but what was most important here is two elements to look at where you are today you have the multiple perspectives so if you are in an organization uh, the financial controller would have a perspective from a certain point of view so for example uh, the credit the debtors might be a bit of a problem you might have an issue with the loans you might have issue with profitability but then the sales people will tell you we're doing well we're selling many we're selling many many products but they are selling at a loss so you could have two different perspectives which collide between them and they need to be intertwined to make sure that you have a balanced view of how the organization is today and in some cases people don't necessarily want to tell you how the situation is and this is for a, right, a number of reasons i'll tell you later on the second aspect is multiple snapshots because what we do unfortunately sometimes is we base decisions on data which is intermittent meaning that we base decisions on past data but data is but your snapshot your photo <coughs> of where organization is today is in a constant state of flux so to be in a position to make the right decisions you need to take multiple snapshots of where you are to make sure that you, that your assessment is realistic so this is uh, vitally important now in terms of technologies of tomorrow one of the things that we need to embrace are different types of technologies i won't go into detail about this because mark has eloquently um, presented numerous examples on different technologies and how they can be used in sustainability but these I would say are the front runners types of technologies that are available and out there in the market so have DLT which was primarily focused on Bitcoin but it has a, a great implication on supply chains especially it has a great application uh, to create permission systems where you can create 
an ecosystem of supply chains using product service system which are sustainable. AI obviously is the in thing today, especially with uh, generative AI, where we're talking about it. Cloud computing, enabling different people communicating and storing data and information in different places. IoT, providing you real-time information at a relatively cheap cost. Uh, the metaverse, which eventually it will come to fruition, but at the moment we are focusing a bit more on augmented reality and virtual reality with across with the digital twins to um, minimize the impact on specific waste before the actual products are, are created. And we've got also cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens, which are also being used as instruments for incentivizing uh, environmentally friendly uh, measures in the, in the process. So establishing baselines. I've mentioned this already, the multiple snapshots and the multiple perspectives. And one of the key challenges in establishing a clear baseline is getting the truth out of people. And people may not also always tell you what they feel. First of all, they might have a mistaken view of the reality, okay, due to lack of, okay, I can call it ignorance, but not ignorance in the sense of being stupid, ignorance <coughs> in the sense of not being exposed to the right data and to the right exposure to information, which gives them the right perception of where they are. So they give you the wrong interpretation of reality. There's also fear, and this also boils down to the management culture within the organization. So people might not tell their management team that th things are doing bad, badly, and so they hide it from their senior management team, or alternatively because of egoistic means, because they don't want to, don't want to share information, because that information uh, benefits them and not the company. So that could be also a consideration that one has to make, uh, which is part of greed. So you need to balance these aspects to understand and define what is a reality calibration in the process. From a multiple snapshot point of view, you need to change, but you are always changing. Now you have to decide either that you leave the change that is going and it's drifting, uh, which means that you are being pulled to a particular direction or else you take control of that particular change process. So establishing your baseline, this is as an example of a maturity cycle. So you can have a maturity cycle which is based on three elements. So you've got the culture, the business and the technology. And as you move along the chain, you start being more adaptable to uh, improve technologies and emerging technologies. So you start the first phase is the objective will be to build the momentum and the incentive of people to warm up to digital transformation. So creating, creating a small pilot project, which creates a quick win for people. And eventually, once that is successful, you can launch into a full scale uh, digital transformation. The second phase is mastering a competence, which is, for example, customer care, or for example, looking at uh, um, uh, processes related to procure to pay, um, to make sure that you are uh, you are competent in doing that particular skill. Once you achieve that skill, you replicate across the whole organization to consolidate it. And the last stage is leading by chaos. It means coming up with new concepts yourself and disrupting your business model. Strategic agility. What most organizations do, unfortunately, <coughs> is that they don't align their, they do have a digital strategy but it is not aligned to their business strategy. And these, th this is fundamentally important because the digital strategy is part of your business strategy. They are intertwined and interdependent. So if you are, for example, focusing on achieving customer satisfaction and enhancing the customer experience, then it is very important that your digital strategy should focus on levers which promote and focus in improving the user experience and uh, creating focus on the differentiation that is created. You need to create a, a flexible maturity pathway, so uh, basically the one that we've seen earlier, and creating an agile mentality. And this is quite difficult in practice to create a uh, an agile mentality. And this is achieved typically one of the cornerstones of agility is to uh, basically um, is 
to uh, acquire information. Information is vital. So the more information you have, the more communication you have, and the more decisions can be carried out in a faster way, and you can actually execute in a timely manner. So to become an agile organization, you need also to be a knowledge-driven organization. And there are two clear pathways. You've got the data pathway, which is translating noise into data. Your data is converted through algorithms into information. And on the other path, it's actually human knowledge. So trying through communities of practice to bring people together, <coughs> internalize that knowledge, and combine that knowledge with the uh, knowledge information is generated <coughs> through the algorithm to create pure knowledge for the organization to make a proper decision. Today we call this process as augmented intelligence, which means basically combining the power of artificial intelligence and the semi-autonomous decision making that this creates with the power of the human to create unique, novel and uh, um, intuitive decisions which are not based which are, which are based on uncertainty so uh, so far ai has been as good at uh, re reviewing decisions based on risk the human being is much more apt at making decisions based on uncertainty so you combine the best of both worlds to create a winning formula so uh, this is an example of digital strategy options. So once you have a digital strategy, you can create uh, different levers that adapt depending upon the specific digital strategy that you want to adopt. So these are eight different types of levers that you can exploit. And depending upon how you combine them, they will focus on a particular area. For example, a community focus uh, strategy will look at the sustainable digitalization, network development, and uh, product development. Um, finally, you've got aligning your organization culture to your business model. So the people dimension is obviously of paramount importance. What I want to highlight here is one uh, is a very important aspect. And in order to implement, I think that there are three key elements that you need to aspire people, asp have an aspiring vision, to implement, inspiring the people to that vision that you have generated, and empowering them to lead the change process. And to do that, you need obviously to have the right structures, you need to have communication, but more importantly, you need to, to take care about two key aspects. One is power, and the other one is trust. Power influences motivation, so it motivates people to instigate change. But the problem with motivation is that it is temporary because it is intended specifically to achieve an outcome. So it is either more money, it is an improvement in your position in your organization, improved satisfaction on the place of work, and it is temporary and not really reliable. Whereas the other aspect which is truly important to achieve in any digital transformation is commitment. And commitment, unlike power, is lasting and sustainable. And the only way in which you can generate uh, commitment is through developing and building trust with your people. So creating right communications and developing uh, collegiality and empathy with the people concerned and making sure that you are uh, within the transformation project together and uh, doing it for the common good for, for them to, to succeed. Linking technologies to critical processes. Uh, basically, last but not least, what I want to identify here is the link between all the elements. So you've got the digital strategies, you've got a number of core competencies over here. So you've got the brand, the customer, the network, the digital agile, knowledge, the sustainability, and the lean. What are the critical processes that focus on those competencies and the underlying technologies? And technologies can be basically divided into three components. There are much more, but the main ones are the core operating systems of the organization, which is the heart of the business that you are uh, operating. So it could be a manufacturing system, an operating system, uh, basically the heart of and soul of the business. And there, there are the supporting functions, which are the back end, which typically include the ERP functions and the HR functions, so on and so forth. 
And there's the front-end functions, which include the CRM, the sales, the business development, and, uh, and BI. So all together, these create the right framework to uh, create a digital transformation program that impacts the goals and objectives of that organization. The most impactful uh, area that creates uh, successful change are the core systems. Ideally, you start from the core systems before you actually implement the others, because the back-end and the front-end systems tend to depend on the core systems in order to function successfully. The problem with the core systems is that they take much more time to implement the change, because unlike ERP systems where they rely on relatively standardized processes across industries and companies, operating systems, operating systems are typically unique within the context of that organization. Thank you very much.